Guy's just hanging out. Look at him. Hey, guy. Literally just hanging out. Not even, there's no barrier. We're just standing next to this big thing. <laughs> He is a native. <laughs> so we're inside the koala experience now, where we are very, very close to koalas. Wait, I'll show you where Alan is. Very, very close to the koalas, so I'm just going to show you where Alan is just now. <laughs> but we don't touch them, we don't touch them, we leave them be. Look. The little buddy. So male koalas um, like their own space. You might notice that we've got individually housed animals. They are all boys and they're all boys over the age of three. In the wild, um, basically a home range for a koala is a group of, or a cluster of trees. And that area, he marks with his scent gland and urinates like a dog would on all those branches and makes it his own. Um, any other males that come into that space, is a challenge to his dominance and they will fight for dominance. So that's his scent gland now. Oh. So that's where all these pheromones come out of to attract the ladies. Mel's gonna smell like him. We do always smell like him. How much does he weigh? Hello. <laughs> oh. No, 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 it's okay. We're used to it. Oh, it's it's not our um, sport. It's just a sleeve if they've got um sharp paws. Yeah. It tends to we tend to look like we self harm here. Oh, God, that's pretty bad. <laughs> Sorry, it's okay. not always like a flattering thing for us. So these sleeves are supposed to protect our arms, but they're not always not the yet. nicest thing to wear during summertime when you see them. Oh. And he's not got really one that holds on tight, so I could take it off, but he's. I was urinating, he was quite, he was quite wet, so I thought I'd just kind of make it soak it up. <laughs> Bounty has this brown coloration through here. Now, that's something he inherited off his mum. Um, Captain um, was really brown through her belly area, um, and so a lot of the time you can see similarities between their mums and, the, and their dads um, that sort of come through. So that brown coloration on his belly is very symbolic. Perfect. That, yeah. <laughs> 
ended up on our social media page. And you've got a fresh bouquet of fresh, fresh bouquet yeah. of there you go. It's just a wee video. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> Meet my new friend. Bounty. This is Bounty. <laughs> this is a female spiny leaf, spiny leaf stick insect. <gasps> She is getting towards the end of her days because Aww. I only live about 18 months. So I think she's gradually slowing down and losing a bit of her health. Aww. But yeah, she's they they're interesting creatures. They're the they're the males and that's the female. But they they only live about 18 months and but they live as adults they live for 18 months, but they live up to about three years looking like ants underneath the ground. So I can show you in here. You can see here's an egg that would be the sort of egg that they would lay and that would fall. They live up in, as adults, they live up in the top of the trees and she would have fallen, the, the egg would have fallen down to the, the ground and an ant would pick it up because it's got a little bit of honey on it and she'd think, oh, that's, that's nice. And so they take the egg underneath, underground into the ant nest and underground it hatches out into what looks like an ant where it lives for about three months, uh, three years yep. and then it gradually starts turning into one of these and it will climb all the way back up into the treetops and it'll live up there. The males will live for about seven months, the females will live for about 18 months. <laughs> this is a more active one, aren't you? Wow. So you can see the idea is you need to look like a dead leaf and then yeah. when you're when you're worried they'll curl their tail up oh. and try and look like a um, scorpion, scorpion so that they'll think they're a bit dangerous. Oh. Have, is as females they can reproduce by themselves. They don't need us. Oh. But what they'll do what happens is they'll sometimes find colonies of purely um, females because if there's no males around then all the offspring are female. There'll be no males. He's a big thick. Can I get my foot in next time to show you the size of him? Here's my shoe. There's a massive snake. Oh wow. Take them home. Can you take a photo? Did you push it? Oh. <laughs> oh, he's quite nice, isn't he? It is a mixture of looking like a kangaroo or koala. <laughs> yeah, he's quite funny looking. Oh, there's a lizard. <laughs> hey, guy. <laughs> oh, he's coming right up. Look, there he is. Hello. Hello. <laughs> what are you eating? Oh, you did? <laughs> Here you go,
But guys, we want to um, show you a bit more of their feeding behaviours today and some adaptations that have given them a reputation of being one of the world's most powerful predators. Is their amazing jaw pressure. Between the tips of a large crocodile the size of Boss, he Boss Hog Bear, you're looking at around about 3,000 pounds per square inch of crushing pressure. 3,000 psi. That is a, about the, the same as the braking power of a jumbo jet coming into land. Oh my god. It's immense crushing pressure. You've probably heard the clapping down of the jaws and the bone crushing power between this impressive <laughs> set of pearly whites right in front of me. We're hoping to get Boss Hog demonstrating a bit more of an active hunting behaviour today. Crocs are ambush predators and they'll usually sit sometimes for days, weeks or even months on end waiting for an animal to get close enough to it so they can opportunistically oh and very God. energy effectively <gasps> Lunge at it. Wow. Sometimes they will show a little bit more enthusiasm and spend a little bit more energy in a hunt. And we've just seen an amazing hunting behaviour called a tail walk. It's very spectacular. And that was quite an impressive jump for Bob. A big round of applause. He's worked really hard to get that potentially 800 kilo body up and out of the water like that. So I'm feeling pretty safe in here right now. I know Boss Hog's behaviour, but he is watching me like a hawk. But I'm going to offer him another piece of food, guys. And it's a really great opportunity to take some photos. But, and I'm going to go quiet, guys, while I focus on what Boss Hog's doing. There's not a lot of meat on my bones, but we really want to make sure that he's looking at that chicken as well. It may seem like a small piece of food, but in fact, crocodiles can go many months without eating anything at all. In fact, those cooler months of the year, it's not uncommon for saltwater crocodiles to go six months or 12 months without eating a single morsel. That's because they're ectothermical cold-blooded and they require that external source of heat like the sun to regulate their body temperature and to help them digest and metabolize their food. It says it's morning and uh, evening, they feed better. This one's leaving. Nah, I'm not interested. It's lovely. Oh, wait. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey buddy. Hey buddy. Oh, hello. Oh. Is he not hungry? I think they're all stuffed though. Where are we? Crumbin Wilders actually. We're at the hospital. We've just fixed a wee 
Dango. Dog. Dango. No, no, Dango. It's not Dango. Dango is a dog. No, it's a Dango. Awesome. What was in there? Those um, enchiada things. So you can actually look and see in the hospital when they're doing operations, which is they had a wee possum on this table. And over here they've got a snake. They've got a wee snake there, but you can watch the operations happening to the animals, so that's good. And this is the koala um, rehab. Look, there's a tiny little drip stand and the little koala's getting a drip. the end of a long day for the kangaroos. We're like the only people left in the park now. Bye! Saying bye to your buddy. No, I don't want a photo. Leave me be. Skippy! 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 Skippy!